I have a new loudspeaker. This is a JBL Pulse 2, which I got from someone at work. It is in fact broken. They dropped it and it stopped working. So what I'm going to do is take the lid off and see if I can find out what's wrong with it. Or, you know, just see what's inside it. Now, I did cheat sight the other looks at some teardown instructions, so I know that what you do is you take these rubber bits off somehow and start from there. This actually looks tougher than it seems. Maybe, maybe it's this that comes off. There's supposed to be some screws in here. Wow. It's, I have a bit of suspicion that that doesn't pull off and it's in fact glued on. These are the woofers. I don't really want to put pressure on them. Let's see if I can lever this without doing it. Nope, that does not come off. That's not doing good, not doing much for the plastic, I have to say. I need to try and get the spudger in enough to lever, which it's not doing. So maybe it is these rubber things after all. Yeah, that does not feel right. That feels like the rubber is glued onto the plastic. other end. Yeah, that feels just the same. So maybe the end caps come off. You see I've already damaged the plastic around here. The person who gave it this to me said that they don't actually like mind if they get it back, so we'll see. Yeah, that ain't working. Let's try some more. Spudging tools. Right. That's actually peeling the, the rubber off here, and I don't think that's supposed to peel off. I may have to, like, stop and look at instructions again. Instructions I found did say very clearly that the rubber ends ah, come off. And there are screws to dismantle the rest of it inside. That's not really... Aha!
does seem to be slowly budging, I have to say. Right, it is in fact glued in, but there are the screws, the instructions we're talking about. So this is going to be moderately exciting to put back. I've got some glue. Okay. And there, if I can focus, other screws to get at the rest of the thing. Now I also have to get the other side off as well, so let's do some more crude levering. So this thing was dropped. It's a Bluetooth speaker by the way, it's battery powered, talks to a phone by radio, usual stuff. It's got two big woofers at each end and underneath the grill there will be multiple high-pitched speakers. They do a pretty good job of sounding like a good speaker. And as it's been dropped, I probably what's happened is that something's broken off inside. And it may be an easy fix. Or it may just turn out to not work at all. Particularly once I've taken the lid off. Blimey. Let's try this. The instructions I found said that removing the battery was quite hard. And if they thought that that was hard compared to this... No camera footage. It just stopped again after a few seconds. So there's this rubber plug, and I'm sure there's something interesting under it. I don't really see there's a metal thing. So the controls are underneath this rubber mat here. The thing is supposed to be, I think the thing actually is waterproof, so this is probably going to be a fairly serious rubber mat. I wonder if it just peels off. Well, there's certainly plenty of glue. point I need to just give up and go and look at the instructions. The thing is that the metal cage is stuck in reasonably well. Yeah, this rubber mat comes off. It's just kind of stuck down with glue. Uh, 
So How's it fastened down at the end? I should point out the thing is completely defunct, so if I can get it working, that's great. If I can't, then that's also not a problem. Right, it is attached firmly at the ends. So I can see the buttons, which are under here. There's little studs in the rubber that push down onto the micro switches, which you can see here. You can see the screws that hold the thing on. But how do they fasten down? That sort of feels rigid at the ends. I'm going to read the... wait, what's this? Oh, have I got this completely... Am I doing this? Yes, I am in fact doing this entirely the hard way. This just peels off. Right. Great. Okay, well, here are some more of the works. And there are more screws. Right, these are slightly bigger, so I'm back to kind of have a short break while I look for a better screwdriver. Okay, my trusty socket set to the rescue. Now, I expect that the main board is underneath this slot. So... Let's do these. That does not actually the thing rolls around and tends to push the screws. So let's just corral these. These are the outside screws, and these are the inside screws. These are different. You see these micro switches here, I strongly expect are on, are attached directly to the main board. So I expect the main board to be on the other side of this, whatever it is. So, does this black panel come off? No. Does this white panel come off? Yes. some more screws in here underneath this piece of white panel. So I can see some priors here. So, let's, so I think what's happening is that the metal cage 
is clipped on to the white plastic and the white plastic screws onto the chassis. So we need to remove the cage somehow without damaging it too badly, at which point the white plastic will just lift off, giving us access to the actual electronics. Right, this is awkward because it's also glued down. Right. And I need to do these other side in the same way. And this cage does actually need to be bent to get it out. And it's fastened down at the back. Wow. Okay, can we get the plastic off? The plastic is in fact a chassis. It goes all the way around. Was there more clips? Those look like clips. Now that's one piece. Let's remove these. Has that helped? Yes, this is loose. But it's not coming out. So the camera here, which is used, well, it's not a camera, it's a light sensor, is used for something to do with, you know, iridescent LEDs. I would be very surprised if that wasn't attached to the main board. Okay, I can see how the cage is fastened on. There are two little hooks each side here, but I don't think I want to get those off. I think that this somehow pulls straight out of the chassis. Now, the other thing I found was this little rubber plug with, oh, it's a microphone. Okay. Right, it wasn't a lever hole. Oops. <laughs> so, what next? So this moves up and down. It doesn't move sideways. It's still good and solid. What about this side? Grief, this thing is dreadful. So what does this P 
peel off. I don't really want to. Well, I can see the two screws in here, but I can't get at them. Yeah, they're completely inaccessible, which makes me think that, in fact, this slides out somehow. But it doesn't. Unless there's some more screws I haven't found. What's this? Ah, this is the access plug to the, the inside. And it keeps the inside hermetically sealed. So if I push the plug in and then push the one side of the woofer speaker, see the other side come out. Yeah. Is that visible in the camera? There we go. But if I remove the plug, it doesn't because the air is wheezing out of that hole instead. So that goes back in. Right, well that actually suggests that this entire plastic drum is sealed which means that all this plastic stuff here must be on the outside. So, I believe that this should just slide out of the outer plastic shell. But I don't see any way for it to do this. I wonder if I actually really do need to remove the cage completely. And how? Bend the little hooks up, like so. Right, and that just pops off, leaving us with a fuzzy tube. But I think this thing is solid all the way around. this lever at all? That's a bit, you know. I'm going to be getting the glue out later. Right, well, that has revealed screws inside the cage where I can't get at them.
If the thing slides out, it's got to slide out this way. But just pushing is not the answer. Wait a minute. This does come off. It's all gummed together with waterproofing, so it's very hard. It's not glue. go. Right, this gives us access to the button board and two screws. So let us remove these. to unplug these two boards, ye gods. So the, the big one is the button board. Uh, I need screwdriver and tweezers. Oh, it's one of these. Right, it doesn't unplug. I quite like these. They are friction fit PCB mounts. You push the, you push this thing out to unlock, then the ribbon just pushes in, and then when you push the thing down, it clamps. Now, do we get the same on this? I think it's going to be all covered up in gunk. I believe it is, but gunky. So let's try pushing these. I'm not sure that's working. It's been potted. Blimey. Someone has, has added glue to hold the thing in place, probably for waterproofing. That means that the clamp won't work because I can't move it. Brilliant. Uh, I really don't know what to do about that. It may just be impossible. and get some of this stuff out. Why would you do this? That's completely not what these little clamps are for. 
there explicitly to allow people like me to do stuff like this. You know, remove the board for maintenance. Or, you know, just destroy it. to get it to move. No, it's never going to move. It's, it's wrecked. Oh, no, oh, that's moving a little. I think I'm going to just need so much force I'm going to end up destroying the socket. Well, this is only the the sensor for the brightly coloured lights, so it's not really critical infrastructure. Is that coming out? It might be, but I don't think it's going to go back in again. It's the buttons that's the important bit, and they are safely unplugged. Right, well, that AM came out, but the connector just tore. Yeah, well, I guess that was going to happen. Never mind. Right, so, so now we can see the two main speakers inside. various bits of wiring, two screws here which are presumably for the next bit, and the main board will no doubt be inside. This, I think, is removing the speaker end cap.
the suspicion is actually glued down. Yeah, I don't think that's doing anything at all. The electronics board, which is the bit I'm trying to get at, and the battery is probably underneath this. Surprisingly robust. And here we have long lines of LEDs that shine through the case and make it all like pretty and stuff. Well, it's days of ambient lighting are over, but you can probably make it as garish as you like using the buttons. And there's probably a terrible Bluetooth app as well. Everything about Bluetooth is terrible. I used to have to program for the stuff. It's terrible. These four screws are almost certainly just holding the speaker down. So I don't think they will be of any particular interest. I have a bit of a feeling this is a this is a lid. It's not moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give up, go and look at the instructions. Okay, well, as you may have uh, predicted, I am in fact an idiot. These things are not glued down, even though they look like they're glued down, and they just peel off, thus giving access to the other side of these ribbon cables, which are plugged onto the motherboard. So I, in fact, destroyed this one for nothing. Never mind. Um, I will, in fact, s just snip off this cable that is, that's torn. Let me just double check. I believe it is. So that's never going to go back on again. So let's just cut this off to stop it dangling. Right. Now on the inside, we have the motherboard here, which is like gummed in. We've got the wire for the microphone, which is here. We've got the Bluetooth antenna, which is here. Let's have a look at the other end. Wow, lots of connectors. Now, the issue is that it just doesn't work after being dropped. So I would expect to see one of these cables snapped off, but I don't see anything except lots of this horrible gummy stuff. I do not believe the motherboard will be easy to get out.
Sorry, that is the wire to the button here. The microphone is this tiny little thin wire here, and that's the microphone there. I do see that they've gummed down a number of these connectors, including the one to the USB. Let's go grab a USB cable and plug it in. Okay, one USB socket plug. Right, and uh, nothing seems to have happened, which is what happened the last time I plugged it in. So if a wire has sheared inside the potting compound, then it's going to be really hard to diagnose. Um, let me just reattach the button board. Like so. Because there are LEDs on it, you see. But none of them have lit up, so I don't think that helped. This one is power, so let's try pushing that one. do is to get the PCB out. Actually, now that I know a little bit more about how it works, I rather want to Reassemble some of this. There was a thing that this screwed into. There should be a plastic piece that goes under here, I'm pretty sure. Yes, how many ideas is this? Okay, I cannot, things, I want to screw this down to stop it flapping about, but I can't without the main plastic chassis on. So let's just unplug this. The PCB I can see is fastened in with big chunks of hot glue. And even if I could get that out, then all these plugs are in the way. And so I wouldn't be able to remove the PCB without either removing the speakers, which I can see that the, the screws for the speaker cage the, the LED cage that goes over the speakers are under the wires here. Wow. So, not really sure how that's going to work. I can remove the screws from the speakers and that will let the speakers move a little bit out against the cage. the inside is essentially this huge wadge of metal and wires and it's all wrapped up in this foam stuff and a lot of the plugs are like hot glued down 
Get ready for robustness. I don't see any obvious broken wires. Though the main USB connector is kind of skew. Oh, that's it. That's in fact the main USB connector unplugged. Let's remove some of the hot glue there. So let's see if I can get that plugged back on again. That might not be USB. Uh, that might be USB data. I think this one is USB power because that's quite interesting. Because I can get these off, and there's a bit more slack than the others. See that this wire runs round here and underneath the board and will eventually meet up with this thing down here. The sockets are labeled, you see, so I can see that this one is marked ground USB V. Now, this big chunky one here, I expect this goes to the battery, and this little one here is labeled mic, so. So I think the battery is under here. In order to get the battery out, you have to remove the main board. Quick check of the instructions again. Okay, so there are apparently latches that lift this piece off and you can get at the battery from there this seems kind of unlikely to me and i think that the instructions i've got are for a different model it's true yeah there's nothing useful under there So to remove the screws from the black centerpiece, which I presume is this bit here. Oh. Here's the plug I mentioned earlier. There is one thing I can try. Which is to just check to see if voltage is getting to the board. So... I was going to just stick the tweezer, uh, stick the, try and connect the multimeter to the socket itself, but I don't think that's going to work. So let's plug that onto, back onto the board. And connect to the two pins on the back of the board.
Right, we've got 5 volts. So this means power is reaching the board, but it's not turning on. This, to be honest, does not bode well for the rest of the board. I kind of assumed that the fault was just a broken wire to, in the, the power distribution, but that seems not to be the case. So I wonder if it's the battery. Okay, well the thing is probably defunct now anyway. So there's a groove under here. So I reckon that's where the, the latches for the battery compartment are. So go to three three So I've got the latches, but it's not coming off. I see a lot of glue in there. The instructions did warn that there is a lot of glue holding the thing down, and you probably use a hot air gun. Well, I don't have a hot air gun, so let's just use brute force ignorance instead. Okay, well, here is the battery, which looks commendably non-exploded, which is always nice to see in a battery. This is really firmly glued in. That's a uh, 22 watt hour. Wow. It's a lot of battery. So here we have the USB and aux connector, and it goes through some potting into the works. Here we have where the cables to the PCB come through. 
Yeah, the, the correct way to remove the button board is to unplug them from here, prise all this potting out of the way, and then run the cables through there, and that looks pretty horrible to me. So can I actually pry the battery out? Oh, that's not so bad. is not bulging. It is indeed a 22 watt hour lithium polymer battery. Wow! Must be something useful I can do with that. Actually, that's quite interesting. Let's have a look at this. Oh, right. Right. I thought there was a, a flex PCB connecting it to the board, but it's not. It's actually wires. And given that there are f five of them in three different colours, I wonder if this is one of those batteries that doesn't have a protection circuit. I do feel there is some kind, something at the top of that battery module. Now let us try unplugging the battery. Like so. And then let us try plugging it back in again without the battery. Let's try that with the button board. See, what I'm thinking of here is, is the battery causing the damage? Right. The problem is elsewhere. I think the only next plausible step is to remove the remove the main board. I really don't want to do that. So I need to get at the two screws. One's here, but it isn't too bad. So let's remove that. The other one is here. Ah, oh, no, that's okay. I just have to pry between some of the wires, which are all glued down with potting compound. Okay, does that actually achieved anything? You know, looking at this, this circular cage, the chassis, is not actually designed to open at all. It is just a tube. So I am not convinced 
this is moving. I'm not convinced that the um, that the speakers attached to the cage at all. Sorry, how do I put this? I am not convinced that the speakers are screwed to a removable chassis. I think they're screwed to the the, sh the main circular chassis, and therefore they won't come out. Uh, at least not in the unit. I think the thing I've just done and done the screws for is a removable piece to allow the speakers to come out. But it's quite obviously that was assembled, then all these wires were gummed into place. So I don't think that is going to help at all, removing that, because I'm just going to have to strip the wires off the wires connect all these LED strips. So let's just do that one back up again. And this one. This screwdriver is not magnetic, and it should be. All screwdrivers should be magnetic. Okay, this is looking increasingly like this is just unfixable. I don't know what's wrong with it, but if it was dropped, that could have broken something on the motherboard. The fact that it's not doing anything when powering on is suggestive, but I don't know what of. What the? So these speakers, how did they get them in? Because this, the white piece here that the speaker cables are connected to protrudes outside the socket for the speakers. It's the same applies here. Let's just loosen these a bit. So now the speaker moves a little. Yeah. I don't understand how they got that in. Unless it went in and then got in a different way around and then got rotated, which is possible. But no, it's square. So these are the LED strips that make the thing light up. These are sealed units. They're covered in some silicone stuff and are just glued down. So these were obviously attached, including their wiring loom, after the rest of the thing was assembled. Yeah, in order to disassemble it, I'm going to have to remove all the LED wiring loom. Which is both theoretically possible. It's all glued down. I can see the wires here uh, going through the plastic and coming out here.
Okay. That wasn't so bad. What's going on here then? Now oh, there's some screws in the middle which I hadn't seen before. So let's get those out. Okay, that's actually coming. So let's remove these once again. wasn't actually so bad. Oh look, here's a hole through the middle of the board, complete with some waterproof stuff that's never going to go back on again. Yep, there's definitely a PCB in there. Okay, so... these speakers. And speaker just in fact lifts out. All my worry was for nothing. Okay, that makes the board seem rather easier to work. Let's just unplug this. With difficulty. Okay, one speaker. Don't see any damage of any kind. I suspect that what's wrong with this is so subtle that I will have no chance of finding it. Never mind. It was a long shot. Okay, this one is having more difficulties being removed. And as I actually thought, the it is because the speaker connector is hitting the plastic chassis. There we go. And unplug. Right. So now we have a PCB which is very hot glued in. You can see the hot glue here. With no readily apparent cracks or anything.
Oh, well, that is interesting, however. Here, it says MCU update. And there's a row of test pads. This will be for reflashing the board. So it's theoretically reprogrammable. You probably couldn't because the chip will be locked down. Oh ho, what's this? What is this? This is a four megahertz crystal with a broken leg. That is what's killing the board. Fantastic. All it needs is a new crystal and a lot of reassembly and this thing could be up and running again. But to do that, I've got to get the bloody board out, which is hot glued in. And if I thought getting this off was bad, getting the board out is going to be so much worse. Uh, I may be able to solder on a new crystal without removing the board. It needs a crystal and legs. I think there's enough space inside here for one. But I don't have a 4 megahertz crystal. I'm not entirely sure what kind of crystal it needs because there are several varieties. Uh, let's just reassemble this thing just so that pieces don't get lost. Because it is now theoretically repairable. The fault is big and obvious and I suspect even my soldering skills are up to that. Just but you know what? Just being able to reassemble this thing is going to be a challenge. I'm not going to bother plugging in the plugs. Um, they're just too horribly fiddly and it's not going to be worth anything unless I can repair the, replace the crystals. It's not worth the effort. Okay, one. camera break. The reason for the pause was my camera will only record half an hour of video at a time. Or less if it gets into a snip, which is why I lost footage at the beginning of this. In terms of if this is irrecoverable, what could I do with it? Well, the LED strips are, will be interesting because they are typically driven by a really simple bit bangable protocol, a bit like uh, I squared C, but you know, different. And these are probably just off the shelf strips. So I can probably just wire them up to something and make them go. And each LED is likely to be individually addressable. And we've actually got a decent number here, all 
nicely wired together into into a grid because this thing was supposed to play pretty patterns on the outside so we could very easily remove these attach it to a cheap and nasty arduino clone and you know make a led grid that would be cool the battery is definitely worth having that's a nice battery assuming it works and doesn't catch fire or anything so this needs to tuck in under the led grid it's all gummed together with gum so nothing goes in well luckily the black goop they're using for waterproofing is so staining that i can tell which end was which come on this goes through here there we go there's probably a number of interestingly interesting components i can pull off the thing the most interesting bits the processor but it's probably not hackable okay that. this one goes in here some of these LED strips down to stop them flapping about. That one goes in there. That one goes there. That one goes there. These ones I pulled the polystyrene off. So So, these screws go on. And of course, I have forgotten about the two screws in the middle. Because you always forget about screws. This one comes off again. And the blessed designers of this thing have actually used all the same size of these little screws. So I don't need to worry too much about which ones go where, with a few minor exceptions. No, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? Actually, before I do that, let's just check teams the talk all the way down. much easier all right now this can go down and stick together and the vast amounts of gum they've used will make it actually stay down even though I've pulled it off So there is a possibility that now I've cut through the light sensor, it won't work at all. 
it depends how the software is written. Uh, if it tries to talk to the light sensor, which will be an intelligent device of its own accord, if it doesn't get a response, it may just, you know, give up. But it probably won't. That kind of behavior is pretty unusual. Okay. Uh, battery cover. So this wire pokes through. And it should just push down and clip on. Yeah, I think that's it. So it's another four of these screws. Uh, actually, hang on, let me be a bit, a bit smart about that. So the chassis pushes on like this. So these two screws are covered. So I have to put those on now. You know, I've had just had a thought. Which is, this thing does not have a woofer. It's got the big, these things, look like woofer uh, base reflex ports. That's the wrong one. But they're not. All they do is connect to the interior space, which is just the back of these two speakers. So in fact, all this thing has are these two little speakers. So any base that this thing is emitting will be completely simulated by two speakers that can't do base. So if I ever get this working, it'd be interesting to hear what it sounds like. Uh, that's a different type of screw. Right, that is in fact the right screw for here, because I can see the countersink. And this one needs to come out. The other countersink screw goes in here. Okay. What's next? Um, let's stick these things back on. They've got the rubber reflex domes, but these are actually metal. Interesting. And their purpose will be entirely to make the thing look cool. It's no longer airtight. Not quite sure. Of, oh, the hole we hear. Okay, so what pieces have we got here? We've got the cage. But the next thing will be this. And I need to get this 
wire for the button bar through the appropriate hole. That's going to be awful. How is that supposed to work? Push that through here. Okay, that's actually not so bad. Oh, right. So this is held on by some of these screws. But in addition, the button bar and the plastic cover for the button bar also held on. So. Let's plug that in. That goes snugly on here. Where did I put the plastic top? Here it is. So here is the defunct light sensor. Right, this will cover up these two screws, so let's put those in. This will just push on here, held in place by all the goop. We've got these little screws, which hold the thing down. This came from Ikea. It's surprisingly good and wasn't very expensive for Switzerland. Okay, that one is a bit less happy. So we now have these screws here. screwdriver bits are magnetic but not very two three Okay, now is it airtight? No. Yeah, well, I'm not really surprised given what I've done to the all the various glue seals. Now this just wraps round here, possibly this way round. but it's not actually going to stick down because the, it, it wasn't stuck on with that kind of glue. This goes on here. Now the hooks I didn't bend are on this side, so... I 
Let's try that again. Actually, tell you what, I will do this properly. Be right back. Double sided sticky tape. Best stuff ever. Terrible double sided sticky tape because it doesn't have the peel away backing, which means it's that the outside of the reel is sticky and gets covered in lint and hair and horrible stuff like that. And the, the stuff I'm used to has a. The outside is smooth plastic. You stick it on and then you peel off the smooth plastic and then you end up with a sticky surface. It works much better. There's the end. Because of course now I know how it works, I don't need to take this stuff off again. So if I can find the end of the tape. Okay. So this goes on here. This goes on here, except you know, I like it to be straight. Right, now that will stay on. Now the metal cage, the hooks I didn't bend are on this end. So, we place the thing in the cage like this, push it down so the hooks engage, and I can see the little plastic indentations where the hooks go. Now I'm not going to bend these back again because then when I take this apart in the future, that will just be terrible. So let's, now we just need to make these hooks engage. Like so. That ain't right. For this side. Apply a little persuasion to these hooks. That's harder than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. I thought it would just clip nicely back on, but it didn't. This side's not clipped on properly either.
Okay. Do this differently. So now we insert the tube in like this. And now the hooks should now neatly drop into place, but they ain't. Is very weird. Uh, don't understand why that's not working. That's a little bit better. Mm, great. Now oh, the hooks are snapped. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to bodge this. Anyway, let's. Go back to the original plan, and these two hooks drop in here. Okay, that better. The other side. The the mat is in fact not on quite right is not helping. Okay, the hooks in fact need to bend backwards to go into these stupid slots, which is one reason I'm having all the trouble. the cage on backwards? I think I've got the cage on backwards. Okay, undo it one last time. I was about to say that now that I know how the thing comes apart I was quite impressed, but I'm not anymore. This cage is terrible. Okay.
That, I think, is better. I think the cage is not symmetrical, and I was putting it on the wrong way around, and that's why it just wasn't working. Blimey. Now, however, it's just being perverse. Okay, well, I think that's as good as I'm going to get. That's dreadful. Okay. Right. The next bit is the... I've done the chassis. The next bit is this bit. But I need to... Do I need to put some screws on first? Uh... I have the silver ones and the black ones. The black ones I can't remember how this thing went on now. Oh yeah, I get it. Right, the black ones held these caps on. And the silver ones held these caps on. So this bit's just Pushes on. Doesn't really want to push on, but it should push on. Oops. That was the bone. which it turns out needs to go on on the outside. That was what was stopping the end cap go on. I just managed to catapult it across the room. That's better. It goes on here. Like so. And it turns out that the chassis, the, the cage, is not on right. That's just wrong. Never mind. And the bung goes in here. And the black ones go. Ones go here. Yep, that's not going to work. I need a proper screwdriver. What's happening is the tip is too wide and it's scraping against the shell, which is not good. That's all of one end. Uh, 
look at that cage, that's just not right. Buttons feel like they work though, which is a good thing. Yeah, um, I think it's probably possible to repair this. Next time I do an electronics order, I will get a stick of four megahertz crystal in because they're not expensive and it's worth a try. Be interested to know if it actually works. Uh, it's never going to be good as new because I like I had to break it to get the thing open and Some of the pieces such as this stupid cage The metal is really brittle which is the catchers are just not bending without snapping So I don't really think that's good. That's a plausible repair uh, to be honest, if I was going to use this myself, I would probably just not bother with the cage and leave it as the the white for I mean it's cheap and nasty, but okay, that goes on here. Now we have these little screws. Repairability wise. It's a pain to get into. It's the wrong screwdriver. Let's try this again. It's a pain to get into, but you can actually get into it. And you don't have to smash bits apart from the cage. The, the bit I broke, which was the, the color sensor, if I had done the right thing, you could get that off without damage, although that would have been gruesome because you have to pull the ribbon connector whoops, through the black goop. So you'd end up having to pry the black goop out of the slot in the chassis that the cable goes through in order to get the cable out, and it'd probably end up fouled with that tarry stuff. Uh, so. Get this, if you open this thing, it is never going to be waterproof again, even if it was waterproof to begin with. That's not straight. Never mind. But on the whole, it's not bad. Audio quality wise, eh. um, to get decent audio, you need big speakers, and this does not have a big speaker. This is cheating. And there's a screw there I didn't put in. There's a black screw hiding. I mean, these, these things work by using psychological audio tricks to make it sound like it's good even though it's not by you know amplification and digital signal processing to enhance different bits of the sound but if you compare one of these speakers with a proper set of dumb speakers that just replay waveforms there is no comparison that's Not right. Something wrong there. That'll do. And this goes on. See, this doesn't have a nice locating piece. If it doesn't work, there's bits I can usefully scavenge. This goes on here. 
here. And I do wonder, do wonder what I can do with that battery. The obvious thing is to turn it into a power bank of some description. Which wouldn't be particularly difficult. You've got to be careful with high power power banks because, you know, setting fire to your battery is not really the best thing to do. Most batteries have onboard protection circuitry, there's a little PCB. So they're pretty straightforward to work with. Uh, others don't, you really have to be sure which one you've got and what you're doing. But that's a nice form factor and it's got an actual socket and stuff. So it might be worth experimenting with. You then use uh, Sorry, you can use off-the-shelf buck regulators and voltage converter units, so very little to actually do. I might need to actually, you know, go and buy a uh, battery controller and charge circuit. I have a 12 volt solar panel, so it might be cool to turn the thing into a rechargeable solar battery. Hmm. This is where I pried the rubber band. Ah, it's not good. So that pushes on there, more or less. Yeah, this, ba this band is stretched. That's not going to be the same again. Really, it needs some glue and probably a new band. Which we won't be able to get. Okay, well, yeah, that'll do. As good as new, sort of. Yeah, this will go in a junk drawer until I uh, do my next electronics order. Then I'll see if I'll have a go at actually making it go. I have managed to scrounge up a new clock crystal, uh, clock crystal even. Four megahertz, I've no idea if it's the right kind, but it is at least the right shape as the one on the motherboard. So let's try installing it and seeing what happens. So it's now actually a couple of months after I did the rest of the video, because it took me a while to realize that like these clock crystals were easy to find. So, it's actually been a little while and I am not entirely certain I remember how this thing went together again. I don't really want to try and rip the thing apart the way I did last time. Uh, so, yeah, I need to take the end caps off first. So, let us find an appropriate screwdriver. If I've got one somewhere. It's a flathead screwdriver. It should be entirely the wrong thing for this. I will be very interested to know if I can actually replace the, the crystal and whether this thing will actually work once I've done it. It seems plausible. The crystal costs about 20 cents, so it's worth a try. Okay, that end comes off. So getting it open last time has actually beaten it up quite considerably. I think unavoidably, it's just, 
it comes apart, but it's not really designed to. And we did have to cut off one component, which is the light sensor. And that comes off. So Now, if I remember correctly, it's not these. These do something else. I think... Yeah, I can't remember how this works at all. But I know that this comes off. So let us carefully unclip these. There we go. These hooks are incredibly brittle. The, this mesh grill does not come off. Oops. So it's possible that taking the thing off and putting it back on again twice is just too much for it. And I haven't been able to bend it properly back into shape, so we'll see. As I say, it's considerably beaten up and I've had it open once. Opening it again should make it a bit less beaten up, but it's never going to be the same again. It may just be, this bit's supposed to unhook, it may just be that the grill will be a write-off. So there's a hook, he there's a couple of hooks here on this side. The ones on this end are snapped, but the ones on this end haven't. That's not actually coming out of place. Okay, I think I'm doing this in the wrong order. Let's remove the end caps again. This will be what I did last time. I mean, I could just review my old footage, but that takes the fun out of it. So what I found out was the clock crystal on the motherboard had snapped off. I couldn't spot any other obvious signs of damage. I know it's been dropped. So it does make sense that the clock crystal just broke off from the impact. And that would mean that the CPU wouldn't run and you know, just nothing will work, which is exactly the behavior I'm seeing out of it. If all the LEDs are software controlled and there is no like hardwired power LED, okay, that ain't working. What did I do? This thing peels off. Ah, right, that's how it works. Yeah, right, I do need to take the end cap off this side. Uh, yeah, if there are no hardwired power ADs, then not having the CPU running means that nothing will light up, and that is in fact what I'm seeing. Still the wrong screwdriver. I have another crosshead screwdriver somewhere. Okay, let's try this. That's better. It's actually it's still not working very well. Yeah, I remember this from last time. I don't think these are the standard 
cross-headed angle. So Posi Drive and Phillips screws have different angles in the screwdriver tip. And it's important to get the right one because if you use the wrong angle, it puts a lot of strain on the wrong bit of the screw. And instead of making a nice clean physical contact and uh, spreading the torque, you put a lot of stress onto one part of the screw and you can like shear. Uh, you can uh, gouge out the inside of the screw so there is no cross in it anymore. And then you're stuffed. And I have a bit of a feeling that these screws use non-standard angles. Weird. This is another small flat-headed one that seems to be doing a much better job. Okay, that comes off and goes away safely. Right. And the grill has in fact now come loose. So we put that away safely. And we pull off the fluffy stuff. And that also gets stuffed away. And we pull off this the drums like so. So I now have access to the board, but can I see the? Yeah, I do not have access to the. Uh, clock crystal, so I need to do further dismantling. So more screws. Of course, I remember. There's a quite a lot of gum holding things down, so there we go. Hmm, that doesn't want to come off. Take some more screws off. So I remember from last time that what I need to do is to take this plastic grill off, which gives me access to the speakers, and I can remove the speakers, and then through the hole in the speaker, I have access to the actual clock. Hasn't been that long. Oh, it slides. Does it slide out? This strip lifts off because here is the light sensor which is now wrecked. I need a pokey tool.
that's not right. Why is that not working? down. Yeah, it's just gummed down. Okay. So that takes the... Uh, this is never going to be waterproof again. So that gives me access to the actual PCB, which now lifts off. And unplugs. Undo the clamp and that just sits out. Yep, and now I undo these screws and the inner piece just slides out from the plastic shell. Let's get you what needs to touch down there. Perfect. stash that somewhere. Okay. Right, the next bit is to remove the bloody LED strips. Now I took some of the foam off, which you get stuck on and won't come off again, so now these are just stuck down. They're just stuck down. They are just stuck down. And there are some screws underneath them, so we do have to lift them off. So we gently pry them off. Uh, I think that one hasn't actually come off. Maybe we don't need to take them all off. I've rather forgotten. Yeah, here we go. I think and there's a couple of screws down here, but I think we can get away without those. So let's undo these. And we can go down again. So I have to remove the entire white plastic shell to get access to these speakers. And I'm going to have to be reaching through the aperture where the speakers went with the soldering iron and trying to avoid melting any parts of the case, which will be exciting. Yeah, just making sure I haven't lost the, the clock crystal. Batteries under this bit.
go. And here we have access, rather awkward access to the speakers. So I think there's a magnet in there. You would have thought there'd be a magnet inside a loudspeaker. I think this is the right one. Oh yeah, I can see the clock crystal. It's under here. So we can avoid having to dismantle the other one. And I remember that I didn't actually do the plugs up. So this should just lift out. Right, now, what have we got? It says C4, that's it, that's it there. C4OOM. Let me do the zoom thing. One day I will turn the zoom dial in the right direction. So this has actually come loose on one side. The clock's crystals are symmetrical. So the next stage is to get it off. Now normally you would get to the underside of the board and desolder it, but this board is well and truly glued in, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to rip it off the board. So here are my trusty angle nose pliers. No, that's not, you can't see a thing when doing that. Let's try this. Focus. There we go. Using metal fatigue to bust the pins. I'm hoping there'll be enough wire sticking out to Pull off. Yeah, I'm mostly looking at the camera screen doing this. It gives us a rather better view. Come on. It rotates really easily. But it's not actually coming off the board. So I wonder whether the crystal is actually snapped inside. There we go. Right, ah. Uh, damn it. So. Focus. Focus. Right. So you can see there's actually a little bit of wire sticking out, which is into the board, which is going to make soldering the new one on interestingly interesting. So what I was going to do, where did I put my tweezers? Yeah. What I was going to do was just try and put two big blobs of solder on the board. One there and one there. And these would make electrical contact. And then I would simply float this in the air with the two legs sticking into the blobs of solder rather than having to, you know, do it properly. Because I don't have access to the bottom of the board. But that's not going to work, so... I have to apply the soldering iron on the, this side of the board. It's 
it's possible by just applying heat to the legs like this, I can melt the solder in the bottom of the board and push the wires out the bottom. Uh, worth a try, I suppose. I suppose. The first thing to do is to tin the clock crystal legs. Just waiting for it to warm up a bit. So I have a clock crystal with two blobs of solder on each side. Now I need to get access to the to the board of the soldering iron. That's gonna have to be through here due to you know lots of plastic being in the way. So I am going to have to hold the crystal with my tweezers like this. And yes, it is super awkward. done it. I have no idea if it's made electrical connection underneath. It feels robust. So let's try the same on the other side. This one's easier without burning myself hopefully. This one's easier because there's some wire sticking out the top so I just actually need to just melt the solder. Okay, well that seems to have done a thing. Okay, what is next for testing? I need to plug the battery in. Right. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm actually going to I have to take this speaker out in order to plug it back in. Yeah, but this will work. It'd be awesome if it did. So this is like the limit of my ability to repair things. If this doesn't work, I'm at basically out of options. Get on so much blue. Okay, now this goes in here. Right. 
I need to get this to be the microphone back in. We should have, uh, the loudspeaker back in. It doesn't really want to go. I think I've got it the wrong way around. I think it's got to be this way. So why isn't that dropping into place? Oh, there it is. Right. Awesome. And we do have the screws. And once this is done, we try it and see. And yeah, uh, fitting about the speaker here, I am um, partly. I think I may get like a startup noise, which I'd like to hear. But also, I am kind of putting off the dreadful moment. Oh, I should probably also plug in the control panel. Okay, now where is the, the, the control panel actually goes on this side of the board, so it's not so brilliant. It wants to be this way up, you see. The seal and goop is disgusting. So we have here a USB cable, and it is now time for the moment of truth. That could be a longer USB cable. I'll get a longer USB cable. Of course, you probably know whether it works because it will say so in the YouTube description, but I don't. Right, well, that's nothing happened so far. I would expect to see a chart. Oh, we've got a light. We have an actual light! My god! That looks like it's actually like, you know, working. Let's try the on button. Whoa! It works! How awesome is that? Right. Uh, I don't know whether these microphones picked it up, but let's try a thing. Uh, right, pair new device. JBL Pulse 2. Right, now what music can I play that will both work properly in mono and not get me a copyright strike? YouTube Music Library I don't think that has done the one I wanted All right Top one. How awesome is that? I actually did something which worked. Now I need to put it back together again and not break it. Okay. Yeah, um, 
particularly as it is live, <laughs> the battery is like working and I need to start dismantling it now. So let's try it off. Right, first step is, okay, now there is actually a little bit of an issue, which is the clock crystal is, you can see it there, is standing proud of the board, and I'm pretty sure that the loudspeaker is going to hit it. Uh, so I probably need to bend it over sideways. There's actually quite a lot of space in here. So bend, 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 bend. Bend it more. Okay, that should do. Uh, I need to plug this in. I can actually reach the, uh, the plug from this side. Oh, I don't need my soldering iron anymore. Oh, these These corner needle nose pliers are the most awesome thing. They are so useful. So much like easier to reach things than a straight pair. Of course, there is also the minor aspect that it, I bash it about so much it looks like trash. I will admit that I would be tempted to try and fit it into another box. All the pieces will easily come out and, and they're all one plugs. So if I was willing to take a hacksaw to it, now it's not actually mine. Um, I was given it as, you know, this doesn't work. Uh, do what you like with it. It'd be awesome if you could repair it. And as I have made it work, assuming it still works by the time I finish the video, I will try and hand it back to them. But there's nothing here particularly complex um, electrically. Yeah. Screw. The clock crystal that I actually put in this thing cost me 20 cents. That's 20 Swiss cents, uh, 0.2 of a Swiss franc. Now, if I were to convert that into, for example, euros, then what you get is 20 cents. And likewise, in dollars, it's approximately 20 cents, which is kind of convenient. It's interesting that this thing costs like 200 francs new. It's not a cheap piece of kit. And that one piece, that one component, turned it from working into complete trash. Because there's no repair service for something like this. Now, I'm aware that I've spent a number of hours learning how this thing works and dismantling it. So my labor cost is very high, but the actual parts cost is 20 cents. It's rather a shame to discard a perfectly 
repairable piece of technology just because it's broken. There must be a better way to handle things. So I'm glad I have actually been able to make it work. I mean, the light sensor no longer works, and uh, given how much I've been chewing up the microphone last time trying to get the thing open, I'd be kind of surprised if that works as well, to be honest, but it sounds like the speakers work. Much of this is glued together. There's gum everywhere, it's disgusting. Okay. So the next stage is to slide the shell on, which goes on this way. Oh, and remember this, because this thing is exciting. This has to go on this way. I don't want that to. Like this hopefully should be the last time I take the thing apart, so I don't really want to break it now. This goes in like this, and the clamp does up. I love these little connectors. That drops into place neatly. And uh, let's actually just fire her up again. That's a lot louder. Now it's got, now it's got both speakers attached. Right, that works. Uh, oh, what's this do? That's the light color. There's supposed to be like, there's LED strips all up. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Now this bit goes on. I'm very glad that the LED, the light sensor turned out to be optional. Kind of a stupid waste of time anyway, but down. I think that screws stripped. Yeah, never mind. Okay, and we now need to insert the drums. 
don't believe they had any orientation, but let's... The gum here has seen better days too. That's not, not on straight. Ah, come on. Sticking to everything except what I wanted to stick to. Looks about right. Now this drum. Okay. Yeah, it's not airtight anymore, nothing like. Previously, you'd push the drum one side and the other would pop out good and firmly, but it's not doing that. Right. Um, so the next thing is the fluffy stuff. But given how terrible the shell looks now I've bent it about, I wonder whether it might look better with just straight plastic. So let's just try sticking this on and seeing what, it, seeing how it looks. And to be honest, not so hot. It's also, yeah, that's not great. It's also sticky, which is also not so great. base now as well. Not sure whether the power down but the volume down button is working. So the I had put the I put this on it. Which just sticks onto the goop. But it's also this is not great either. I would be slightly inclined to well put it in the new box for a start. Uh, but uh, clean the goop of the plastic shell and try and make it a bit presentable, like painting it black. But uh, let's try and put the cage back on, I think. Do I want to try and put the fuzzy felt on it? Which side has got the adhesive? This side. Oh, I remember. I put 
a double-sided sticky tape down to hold it in place, which is now not at all sticky. Not very good double-sided sticky tape. It doesn't need to be particularly good, just as long as it holds it in place enough to get the cage on. So, I also remember the cage as being a right nightmare to put on. So this thing is the badge which goes here, so this slides on. Which side has got the hooks that work? This side has the hooks that work, so this goes in like this. And these hook into place. And then you get the nightmare of getting this thing into place. And these hooks. And push them down the slots. actually clicked into place. So there's pushes further. Uh, that hook's actually bent in the wrong place, so that's better. That feels reasonably robust actually. This side's not good. Do I need more bending? Okay, that actually wasn't so bad, and it doesn't look, it's, I mean, it's all slack and horrible, but that's not so, not as bad as I was dreading. So let's get this thing on again and see how it looks. That goes on there, that stretches, this thing goes in the hole. so bad. Okay, let's get these screws on quickly before something breaks. one on this side. All right. I need to remember to put the bung in or the water will get out. That's more airtight now. Who would have thought? And four screws on the other side. You know, the clock crystal down there probably still works fine. If you could somehow, you know, 
connect it up. All it really needed was to be bent back into place and the broken leg resoldered. If you could somehow reach inside the PCB to where the, the leg was snapped under the clock crystal. All right, now this which sends got the microphone. That's not pressed into place. So there's a there's a gap there. So I would have thought that doing up these screws would have caused the end cap to pop into. Now that's actually all the way up to the end, so maybe something else is wrong. Let's have a quick take this off and have a look. Yeah, that's what they've done. So this needs to why isn't that going in? Hmm, okay, it's good enough. Um, possibly it's just it's been sufficiently wrenched about. Yeah, there's horrible gouging here around where the microphone was because I didn't realise it was a microphone. I thought it was a, a clip. holiday Christmas and the bed and breakfast I was staying in had a Bluetooth speaker playing horrible Christmas music in the, the lounge and I connected to it remotely with my phone and I played a bit of a track that I actually wanted to hear because there's no security on it or anything and there's I didn't even have to get up and go over to it but then, ah, oh, what's happened here? Uh, that's the bum. It's got caught underneath the... Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. So it's got caught underneath this rubber thing. Uh, however, it's going to be hidden under the shroud, so I'm not going to do anything about that. Um... But this one's got the button on it, so it goes on this side. So this one must go here. Now, where are the screws? Oh, uh, yeah, I played a bit of a track and decided I probably better stop fiddling with it, so disconnected, at which point the Bluetooth device stopped working and it took the concerted effort of the two staff, like half an hour to make it work again uh, with me looking very embarrassed in the corner. Luckily I was the only customer. Bluetooth is dreadful. Um, and this screw. And my father's car has Bluetooth. I can connect to it from my phone and I can play music on it and it plays fine for five to ten seconds 
and then the pitch of the music slowly sl slides down I think exactly one tone and then it continues playing fine which is an incredibly special bug I have no idea how they managed to make it do that Where are the screw holes? There's one. Ah, right. I was trying to find the button to make the lights light up, but of course it's the one just here. I'll try that one out in a moment. I can't remember what those are for. Oh, uh, they'll be for the plastic cage and the inside. Oh well, I'm not taking it apart now. That feels like that one's stripped. Okay. Right, now these things go on. Uh, this one has a rubber groove for the button housing here, so this one must go at this end. And also I think that in the several weeks I did the first part of the video, they are a little less stretched, so they've actually gone in. And this one, yeah, there is still no way to get the positioning right. There's these little holes that match the screws. So let's try that one there. No, that's not right. Because this plastic piece is also irregular. Not right. It only goes in one way around. Oh, wait a minute. This goes here. Yeah, brilliant. That wasn't so dumb after all. And there we have it. I think it is now finished. Let's plug her in and see if it still works. Charging. Power. Bluetooth connection. And let's try the button. Try playing something quiet. Lucky rubber ducky. does nothing. Maybe I've just managed to break the LEDs. If the light sensor here actually fails in the wrong way, maybe it's, you know, just confused. That does seem unlikely. What does orange mean? Yeah, uh, that day seems weird, to be honest. This is changing the colour. Uh, 
I think it is also possible that I managed to damage the wiring loom for the LEDs. Well, the volume works. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to call that good enough. I don't know how the rest of the LEDs work, and uh, maybe the owner will know, but the owner actually wanted it to play music on, so I'm going to call that done. Repairing the wiring loom probably isn't difficult, it's just wires. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to leave this to charge for a while. Anyway. Tear down and successful repair of a JBL thing. I did figure out the model, it's in the first half of the video, but that's been too long ago for me to remember it. Stop. Just stand upright, damn it, while I do the outro. Come on. Ah. Yeah. It wants to get away, but there you have it. It's done. I hope you enjoy this video. Tell me what you think of my incompetence in the comments.